Hello my soccer universe and welcome to the preview of the second ever conference league final between Fiorentina and West Ham. I think again the conference league throws up a very interesting final, again a final between two teams that have started in this competition, which is something that I'm really, really uh, not only excited about, but I find really cool uh, that, you know, it's not some Europa League uh, relegated team that goes in. No, it's actually two teams that started out in the UEFA Conference League and that made themselves through. Both of these teams have been among the favorites from the beginning of this competition, uh, changing around as it uh, progressed, especially Fiorentina had a little bit of a wobble early on, um, but of course the top scorers right now and West Ham, to be honest, have more or less cruised through this competition. However, they might face their stiffest task so far. I think it's a very interesting final in the sense that I think that West Ham definitely have the better players and we'll talk about that later on when I go a little bit more detailed through the list. But I think that coach Attiliano, Italiano, Vincenzo Italiano for Fiorentina has formed a really good team, a team that can beat almost any opponent on their day, can give loads of troubles. Um, of course, it also needs to go their way. So interesting stuff for sure. Fiorentina definitely had overall a better season than West Ham United, but both are in a European Cup final. But before we go back into the teams, where will the final be played? Well, after Budapest, we're now going to the other former imperial uh, big city of Prague. I think if the third final would take in Vienna or, you know, if there was any switch around, I mean, Budapest is probably more um, Champions League ready than Vienna at this moment. But I would have loved it to have Prague, Vienna and Budapest as the host cities. But... Prague is the host city and what can I tell you about Prague? I love that city. It's one of the most beautiful cities that you can visit in Europe. Uh, whether it is Charles Bridge across the Vltava River, the old town square or the old town in, in, in itself, the big uh, castle uh, up the hill with even the uh, cathedral in there. There are so many sights to see and wander in Prague. And it's not only the old stuff where it looks medieval. If you go outside, you find also, also a little bit more modernist architecture. I mean, the dancing house is probably the, the, the biggest one, but you also find like uh, end of the 18th century, that type of architecture, quite some nice examples. You have to take the tramway in Prague to get the true experience. Uh, it's a wonderful city and it's well worth your visit whether there's a final or not. Speaking of tramway, this is also one way to get from the city center to the, uh, I call it Eden Arena, of course, for sponsorship reasons, called the Fortuna Arena, which is more or less on the eastern or southeastern outskirts of the city. Um, and this is for, for, for the first time that I can make so much video and say, I have recently been at that stadium, not in the stadium, but at that stadium. It is a smallish kind of sta stadium, uh, which is typically for Conference League finals, but I think it's uh, still, I mean, has been built in the uh, 2000, but it's still rather modern uh, stadium. And I think it's still the most modern one in the Czech Republic. And it hosted a few um, UEFA Super Cup finals. I think at least two as well. Why is it called Eden or Eden Arena? Because the city, it's not the place of the heavens. It is the, the uh, part of the city is called this way uh, what I like is that when I visit, we, we visited there is that they have like big posters of former greats of Slavia Praha which is of course the team that play uh, in that stadium uh, there it is has a uh, tramway stop right at that stadium and also is very well connected to the, to, to the city via other means via, uh, railway and so on it is also the only stadium that I know of that has a McDonald's in it, which I find really cool and uh, uh, curious, not, not, not necessarily cool. There's a mall right across it and there are a few uh, shops in there. It's a modern stadium. I think it will do a good job. Yes, maybe given the size of the fan bases of each of these teams, maybe a slightly bigger stadium would be better. But what I like that they do in the Conference League is that they say, okay, this is a smaller team competition and we give now 
also smaller nations a chance to host a European final like we had Albania, we had the Czech Republic and I think this is a great thing that they have. The referee for the game is Carlos del Cerro Grande, I think one of the two uh, best referees from Spain at the moment uh, besides Gil Manzano. Yes, uh, Matteo Lajos does not qualify unfortunately any, any anymore. I think he's a capable referee. Uh, let's see how he will perform. I honestly don't. I see him here and there, uh, I, especially for his long name. I think that's the one thing I really know about him. But I always feel when he's re refereeing that he is uh, quite a good one overall. As always, I'm wondering which of the teams are the bigger ones. Uh, this one is actually a relatively close call. I think. Both teams have of um, roughly equal size again. Now, Florence is of course a world-renowned city, but it's a much, much smaller city than London. But East London, you know, is kind of this working class environment and of course brings a sizable fan base, most notably, of course, the guy, uh, Steve Harris from Iron Maiden, from my point of view, uh, with it. Whereas Fiorentina is one of the... I would say one of the biggest Italian teams just outside of the top three. But in the next level, Fiorentina is always in the discussion, having had uh, great players like most known would be Robert, uh, Antonioni, is, I think is the Fiorentina, but there's also Roberto Baggio that uh, had probably his best years, uh, Gabriel Battistuta, Rui Costa, uh, all uh, huge players. Where West Ham, I think player-wise, I would argue the best ones, of course, Bobby, Bobby Moore and West Ham more or less won the World Cup in 1966, at least, so they believe. So um, I think it's a rather odd comparison if we just look by titles. Fiorentina has the advantage domestically by having won two national championships, but they're also a long time ago in 55, 56 making it all the way to the European Cup final, only the second ever against the Real Madrid. And then another one in 68-69. and 60, 68, 69. So uh, it has been a while that Fiorentina have been champions. The last time they were really in the running was in the 98-99 season that Milan ended up winning, just having a little bit more breath and of course, um, a longer breath. And if you, um, Edmondo would not have taken the time out might have also taken a different time. They also are six time winners of the Coppa Italia in 1940, 61, 65, 75, 96 and last time 2001, which was kind of the crowning achievement of that last really great Fiorentina uh, squad. They had not too long ago some decent runs in Europe, but I have not made a European final in quite a while. Uh, the last time they were in the final, they actually won it. This was the old Cup Winners Cup, the first installment of the Cup Winners Cup when it was not even under UEFA auspices. It is now recognized as an official UEFA title, but it was in 6061 where they beat in the final Rangers 2-0 uh, and 2-1s. Uh, so 2-0 away from a 2-1 at home uh, to get their only title so far. To me, uh, if you're a jersey uh, buff, this is an interesting game because uh, Rangers twice played in blue and white stripes with blue pants. Fiorentina played in purple away from home and in white at home. I think that's very, very interesting overall. Um, I think other than that, the biggest moment was basically that when Batistuta scored beat Arsenal at the old Wembley Stadium, I think, uh, and maybe a 3-3 Barcelona. That was, I think, in the 1999-2000 season. So that was the last time that I think Fiorentina probably had a big night in Europe, but uh, didn't result in a bigger run. Domestically, again, we have that um, West Ham have only won uh, the championship as uh, tie titles. They have not won, uh, or, you know, the second uh, tier, uh, the second division of the championship. Uh, they have not won a national title, which is something that surprised me a little bit. Admittedly, I am probably less aware than I should of how uh, the English titles have evolved over time, because I think it's a uh, rather even field. However, they have won the FA Cup three times. Again, it has been a while in 64, 75 and 80. So even longer time ago than um, Fiorentina, 
And they also have European glory in the same competition as Fiorentina. here. And they won the Cup Winners' Cup in 65 in a 2-0 uh, win at Wembley against 1860 Munich. Yes, 1860 Munich. That tells you how long ago that was. I think uh, a rather, rather long time ago. Again, in Europe, West Ham have not really made a big dent overall. I, at least I cannot recall that. So uh, in that sense, purely from the titles, I think Fiorentina are the bigger team. However, they had two teams have never met. So this is the first uh, time that they meet I like in a competition. Uh, however, when we look at the market value and so on, uh, those things point more towards West Ham, where uh, when I look look at it, the uh, market value is uh, almost twice the, for West Ham is almost twice the one for Fiorentina. Yes, uh, kind of upper mid table Italian team and a established Premier League team. There are deep differences, and if you ha can have a Paqueta, uh for instance, just bringing him off the bench at times. There is a clear difference in quality when it comes to the squad. Fiorentina can only do it via the team. Uh, Fiorentina is also a slightly younger team, uh, age 28.5 for West Ham, 27 on average for Fior Fiorentina. And West Ham also have a whole lot more international players. Now, looking at the pathways of these teams to the final, which is another point of uh, con comparison, Fiorentina actually had a r rather rough uh, playoff draw, uh, beating 20, 2 1 at home and 0 0 away. The group stage was didn't start out well with 3 0 loss away from home to uh, Bajakshi and only 1 1 against RFS from Latvia. However, once they beat Hearts convincingly, it was then a little bit cruising and they got their mojo back. And I think they really surprised everyone when they beat Braga 4-0 away from home in the playoff because they finished only second. And then 3-2 at home where Braga had a lead. At, I want to say him a 2-0 lead at one point. But Fiorentina scored early enough to never make this a problem. Same uh, similar story. Sivaspor first 1-0, then 4-1 was cruising. They also totally destroyed Lech Poznan uh, with being clinically away from home. And then it was level at a point that it could have gone to overtime. Uh, I think Poznan had a 3-0 lead, but like the Braga win, they get the goals to kind of move on. And then they lose 2 1 at home to Basel in a similar way that they won, uh, lost against Poznan because Basel was uh, just more clinically. And that's the one thing that I have to say with Fiorentina that worries me a little bit is that uh, they created a lot of chances. They did so in the Italian Cup final. They did so against Basel, especially, but they did not convert. This has been now as, as of late. They have scored many, many, many goals, especially with Caporal and Nico Gonzalez up front, uh, being also very well served from midfield. But it should not have gone to overtime. In Basel, Fiorentina Schulz should have won that one much, much, much sooner. On the opposite, um, West Ham only dropped, did not win a single game, and at that, that was a game that didn't, yeah, I, I must say it didn't, didn't, didn't matter. It was a little bit tight, but cruised through the group stage and the playoffs uh, was never any, tr any trouble. Um, Ghent gave them a run for for the money in the end. They get come out with a lucky draw, but uh, then they win convincingly in the return leg. Z, they were down one nil at home. Turn, 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 turn around, and Z though seemingly had the number tried, but never could could get going. West Ham just a little bit more clinically there. So um, I think the path to the final was a little bit easier for West Ham. Uh, when I look at the opponents, it's hard to compare, but you know, AZ and Twente are teams, maybe AZ slightly better than LS. That, that, that's where I can have the best comparison, but it was at different times of the season. I think the marquee win for um, Fiorentina was probably against Braga, and the one for uh, West Ham was probably the one over AZ overall. Um, when I look into the final in general, um, as I said, I think the individual class is more with West Ham. If they have a good plan, they will probably uh, be hard for Fiorentina to keep out. Fiorentina need to convert the chances and they need to get their pressing game going. Uh, it's of course for Fiorentina, it's the second chance for the first title since 2001. It's also for West Ham the first chance for a title in a long time, since the 80s. So there is kind of uh, loads of uh, pressure 
in both cases there. As for the jerseys, I expect Fiorentina in the purple home. I have given now the one from the 22-23 season, although it may be that they take the jersey that they have recently released. I actually would hope they go with the one from the 22-23 season. I personally like that, that one a little bit more. And I don't think West Ham have released anything new and I have not heard, heard anything. I think the only jersey that makes sense is they play in their white one uh, with the orange pants and, and so on, which I think would be a very interesting um, color match, matchup because I don't see the West Ham home jerseys or the black ones matching up well with the Fiorentina look. But hey, I have been wrong before, but this is how I expect it. As for the favorites in this final, it's a really, really tight call. Um, the major bookmakers, uh, there is the one that I know is, is usually the benchmark that has Fiorentina just ever the slightest of favorites, whereas others it's either even or skewing more towards West Ham. My model ever so slightly but it's really just by a fraction like 50.3 to 47.7 in favor of Fiorentina however this is I think is mostly due to the West Ham did not have a good season and therefore uh, they have a much lower rating I think ahead of the season West Ham would have been the favorites there I think this is gonna be an interesting final I think it will be better final than the one between Sevilla and Roma. I think there are goals in that one. Um, I'm sure that Fiorentina will create many, many chances. And for me, it hinges upon how much can West Ham resist the press. They have the players to do that. Uh, and the goal scoring record of Fiorentina. That, I think, will be the decisive one. I'm really looking forward to this final. I cannot tell it. This is probably the one final of all the three. That's that. That's the one I looked forward most because I think both teams are capable of playing well and I think it's rather evenly matched. And I'm really hoping that at least one European trophy will go Italy's way. So we have only Fiorentina and Inter left. Both the remaining finals are between Italian and English teams. My gut feeling says that the English teams are to be favored in both of them. In any case, please let me know how you see this final going. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video and I will talk to you soon about everything that happened in that final. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to this channel and hitting the little bell icon so that you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.